Congratulations, you completed the No Bullshit Guide to Java Spring Boot. Now it's time for your final exam. But before we do that, please consider supporting me. You can give a one-time donation of 69 cents for the memes. My Venmo is in the description. For context, when I was learning Spring Boot, I spent $20 for a course on Udemy, and it was worse than the one I made for you guys for free. You can also join my Patreon. Right now I have a $1 donation tier, but there are more tiers with benefits coming soon. If you're unwilling to do that, I completely understand. Instead, you can follow me on all of the socials and like and comment to help the algorithm. And before we talk about our final exam, you can see my GitHub, link in the description, and you can clone the repo that I used to teach. And I did do a walkthrough of the final exam for version one of the series. The links are in the description and it's almost identical. So if you get stuck, you can reference those. Okay, here are your final exam requirements. We're going to create a product that has full CRUD operations. So create, read, update, and delete. The first required field is an ID, of course, but I want you to use a GUID. I alluded to this in the miscellaneous video, but I have a full video explaining GUIDs if you are unfamiliar. It needs a description, a price, a manufacturer, that can just be a regular string. It needs a category, but for the category, I want you to have a separate table in MySQL for the categories and each one must be unique. So many products can each map to a single category. So there's your relational mapping. I want two timestamps. One is created at and one is updated at. So whenever the post request comes through, that will be your created and updated timestamp. But on the put request, you're only going to update the updated timestamp. It also needs a region of either US or Canada, and I want this to be stored as an enum. You need to be able to read a product, so there needs to be an endpoint for get a specific product by its ID. Remember, the ID is a GUID. Also, get a list of products by search, and you're going to return a product DTO, and for the DTO, send everything except for the timestamps. We want to be able to search by criteria, so we're going to use query string parameters. One will be for the name or description, one will be for the category, and there'll be one more query string parameter for the price or alphanumeric order. In order to do number three, you'll have to use the sort function, but that's a quick Google search to figure that out. And all of these query string parameters are optional. And lastly, I want you to limit it to the first 10 results. Again, that's another quick Google search. We expect a lot of products to be in here, and this is a pretty common requirement for the business. And when you're all done, go ahead and cache your get products for performance and store it for five minutes. We want two more endpoints, one for create and one for update. You need a product validator class and you're going to use that on both endpoints. And you need good exception handling to send back good error messages to the UI. And you can use Spring Boot's default error messaging or you can use your own custom response, whatever you want. And here we are going to do some external API integration. So the business says they want no profanity in their name or description. So we're going to use a third party API called the Profanity Filter API. You can Google how this works. You will need an API key, but as long as you have an email to sign up, it is free. And you want to send a message back to the UI if the profanity is present. So basically what happens here is whenever the user sends a create or an update request, you then need to call an external API, check to make sure it has no profanity, and if that's good, then you can save it to the database. You also want to be able to delete a product by its ID. For logging, go ahead and add logging to each endpoint, each exception, each logical flow for the application. Testing, the business wants thorough testing. So essentially what that means is you're gonna have a unit test for each logical flow of the application. Try out TDD or test-driven development. This is when you write the unit tests first and then you write the minimum amount of code you need to get the unit test to pass. When you're all done with that, go ahead and add the security layer. So only logged in users can create, update, or delete products, but all users, not authenticated, can get products. This is exactly how Amazon works, by the way. You can search for a product without being logged in, but you can't check out until you are. You are also required to have either one role or one authority saved in your database. So only the super user can delete products, 
but any authenticated user can create or update a product. There's a link to this final exam checklist in the description. You can download it and highlight as you go. I wish you the best of luck. If you get stuck on any part, please leave a comment and I will reply. Thank you so much for watching and good luck being a Java Spring Boot backend developer.